Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of LX training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Visit me online at www.foxonecorp.com for your glider supplies. In this video, we want to take a look at setting up your turn areas when you're flying a turn area task or an assigned area task using the features within your LX computer to help you optimize your time on course. And so we can see on the screen, we're just flying into a turn area here, and we have part of the turn area colored blue, part of it colored red, and we have some lines going across. And so these we're going to set in the graphics menu, and they're the uh, delta time options that we can set. So to give some background on this flight and the task, let's just take a look at what we have here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and edit the task. And under the view menu, we're going to look at that on the map. And what we have is we have a triangle here. We can zoom out so we can see the whole thing. We have a triangle where we did a start on leg at Rockton, and we're just on our way into the first turn point right here at Hagersville during this replay. You can see that I have the turn area set to 20 kilometer radius here and it's filled with a green fill when there's no information about the ISO lines or the delta time being filled. So we'll cancel here. And some other things that we want to think about is what controls the speed that the computer is predicting during the flight. And one of those is how we have in q and in reserve here, our ETA calculation. And so we have various options under this ETA calculation based on, we can set it to straight McCready, where it will use just straight McCready theory based on the ring setting you have to predict your speed around the course. You can use average vario, in which case it's using what you've actually climbed at. We can use average speed in vario, so it's going to blend your achieved speed with your achieved climb rates. We can use average speed and McCready. So again, it's going to blend your average speed so far on course with the McCready. So for now, we're just going to set this to McCready. But this is an important consideration on how your computer is really calculating your time on course. The other place that we want to look is inside graphics. And within graphics, we have the task graphics. And everything we want to take a look at is down in the bottom show optimal track that creates a little blue arrow on the screen it's pointing to where the computer is suggesting the optimal point in the turn area is to make your turn and then we can fill the area with iso lines iso meaning constant so in this case lines of constant time and so every line that's drawn in the zone is going to be a constant delta time, how far under or over time you will be if you reach that line. And then the AAT fill option, that allows us to color the observation zone with blue or red, red being hot, meaning you're going to be over time, and blue meaning cold, you're going to be under time. And then finally, text AAT color is something that we can set and that's just the color of the numbers beside the ISO lines. So with those set, we're going to close and go back to our task window. And in our task window, we can see some of the things that I've talked about. So we've set the AAT fill to delta time. And we can see this blue zone here. And that's telling me if I was to turn anywhere inside this blue zone, I would be under time on my task. If I go into the red zone through the other pretty much three quarters of the circle, I'm going to be over time. The ISO lines, in this case, I have task delta set. And so what we can see is if I fly to this blue line right here, I'll be 10 minutes under time if I turn anywhere on that line. If I go to the next one, five minutes under time. And where the blue and the red meet, that's obviously where I'm going to be exactly on time, so there's a zero minutes there. And then I have five minutes over, 10 minutes over, 15 minutes over, and obviously anything outside that 15 is going to be a greater time over time. So we'll go back to our graphics menu here and our task. And instead of delta time, 
we'll put in here expected distance and say OK on that and close. Back to our task. And now what we can see is that the text for the ISO lines has changed and the positioning of the ISO lines has changed. So now we can see that if I go to this first line and turn, I'll have flown 500K. And then it goes up in 10 kilometer increments until I get to this back line. And if I turn anywhere on that back line, I will have turned at 550 kilometers. All of these distances and the delta times in the previous setting are based on the fact that I currently have the next two turn point cylinders set to be the center of the turn point. I have not moved my, uh, my waypoint to any point within the cylinder. So unlike the clear nav that makes some assumptions and moves your uh, expected point, the LX computers always leave it at the middle of the cylinder until you've specifically moved it yourself. So all these numbers and your ETA, your task delta here right now, is based on the assumption that I'm going to the middle of all the cylinders. And so as we might suspect, the things that are going to control what happens here in terms of the positioning of these lines and the fill time is going to be our MacReady and our current task speed that we've achieved. And so if I go up here and I change my MacReady, and we'll just increase our MacReady up to, let's say, four knots, and we close, we can see that if I'm able to achieve four knots for the rest of the flight, I'm going to be under time even if I go to the very back of this cylinder. Again, assuming that I'm going to the center of the next two cylinders. And so MacReady has a significant effect because we've set our ETA calculation to MacReady. So it has a significant effect on the time that we're going to see in terms of overtime, undertime on our uh, optimization. So if I go back to MacReady and I reduce that, put it down to about 3.4 knots, even at 3.4, I'm still going to be under time. Take it down to about 2.8. Now we can see with the 2.8 ring, I need to go all the way out to almost this 540, 550K point before I am going to get myself into the position of possibly being over time. I'll put the McCready back. I think I had it at 2.4 to start. Yeah, that looks like about what we had. And now we'll talk about this blue arrow that we see projecting from the nose of the glider. That comes from the setting in task, show optimal track. And so that arrow is trying to point us to the optimal place in the zone to fly the furthest in the least amount of time. So we'll go back to our task. And we can see right now this is pointing straight up in this direction. So what it's telling us basically, if we go to this, the blend of the blue and the red, where we're going to be right on time, straight ahead to about that point, that's what the computer is suggesting is the optimal point to turn for us. If we go back to our graphics and task, and instead of expected distance, we put expected speed for our ISO lines. And go back to our task. What we can see is we get a lot less in the way of uh, lines showing up in this particular case. A lot of times when flying, I've seen many more lines than this. We can try and play with that a little bit by adjusting our MacReady. We can see right here, a speed of 85 kilometers per hour and down here with this red line here that would be our 83 kilometers per hour when we've adjusted that MacReady setting. So let's put that back up to 2.4 and this this zone here is actually representing the 93 and this line is representing the 91. So, you know, if I touch any point on that line and turn, I'll do 91. So with this video, I've tried to show you how you can use the AAT ISO lines and AAT fill options in the graphics task menu to optimize your speed 
and decide where best to turn during a, a turn area task. Hopefully you've learned something new about your LX computer today. Visit me online at www.fox1corp.com.